I want to thank you very much for you welcoming me to your school. Uh, I will start off by saying to you, my name is Peter Bate. I'm 83 years of age. When war broke out, I was 13. Now, I usually say to the children, before I start talking about the war itself, I want to say this. There are no winners in wars. There are no winners in wars. Everybody is a loser. The man that I killed is somebody's son, somebody's father, somebody's child. So wars do not resolve anything. In 1939, September 1939, my first recollection of war as a 13-year-old boy was seeing my best friend next door to me, his father leaving to go to war. And his daughter and his son was waving and his wife was waving him goodbye as he went to war. It was a very sad situation as nobody knew whether he was going to come back alive or dead. Nobody knew. Anyway, it was Pretty well, one year, very quiet. The Germans were occupied with Poland uh, and all the other European countries. And they left us alone for one year. But after that, uh, may I say, it was like hell broke loose. We would watch a thousand airplanes going in the air. They rendezvoused around the Windsor Castle as their rendezvous point where all the bombers would then go over to Europe and bomb Europe. I can assure you we were very happy at the fact that we were retaliating at last as very many nights went by when bombs would drop all around us and machine guns and it was very tiring to try to sleep. Also to going to school uh, it was very difficult because the Germans would come over during the school time and we would have to run to the air raid shelter so that we wouldn't get hurt. Today, having come back home safely, I realize how important it is for you to wear a poppy. The puppy says to me as a serviceman, as a military man, that you care about the freedom that you are now enjoying at your school. Not being interrupted by bombs, not being starved because you couldn't have enough food. None of those things you don't have. So wearing a puppy, what you're saying to me is, thank you, Mr. Military Man, for keeping my country and my parents alive and in free in freedom that is what wearing a poppy is is important and tell your friends if they're not wearing a poppy tell them they should wear a poppy because it shows appreciation for all the men that are dying and right now we have a lot of 138 people from afghanistan dying for that country so that that country can have freedom my nephew adam uh, is a Canadian soldier and he joined the army around I think it was around 2002 and his idea of joining the army was to become a Canadian peacekeeper in fact he wanted to be building roads and whenever you, he heard stuff on the news about disasters and the Canadian troops got sent in that was his dream that's why he decided to join the army and unfortunately for him though things didn't quite work out that way um, Adam was sent to Afghanistan two times. The very first time was um, during a big Canadian offensive, Operation Medusa, and Adam actually was in the first group that went out into the fields. Um, luckily for us, he's never been injured, but he lost a lot of his dear friends in that offensive. And he came home a bit changed because he saw a lot of death and I don't think anyone could be the same after seeing things like they see there. 
it was very difficult for his family. Um, Any time we'd hear anything on the news about, which was almost weekly, about anybody being injured in Afghanistan or a Canadian soldier being killed, um, you know, we would all be holding our breath, wondering if if he had anything to do with it. But as his mom says, like she has the army gives her his dress uniform. He's not married, so if he was married, that would go to his wife, which she has to keep under his her bed. And if anything happens to him, they'll come knocking at her door and ask her for the uniform back. So he's been there twice, and a really hard time is kind of when that uniform arrives to the house, because you know, okay, you're keeping that. Last September, um, there was a major offensive, and Adam was in a convoy, and luckily for him, and unluckily for others, the truck behind him got blown a bit to bits, and that was three of his dearest friends, people that he uh, stayed with in Shiloh, Manitoba, where his base was. And he was a sergeant in charge, so we had to accompany those bodies back to Toronto along the Highway of Heroes. So that was pretty shattering for him. Why should we be grateful today is because we can do our own thing, we go in the store, we can buy whatever we want to buy. We're not interrupted by bombs or machine guns. And it's so free that we can be whatever we put our minds to be. And it's up to you now. We done our bit in giving you your freedom, your peace. Now it's up to you to build a beautiful country whereby you will not have to go to war. Well, this medal here, are these two medals here at the end, are military medals. This is service medals. This medal here is in Burma. We, uh, I had a fight in, in Burma, uh, the islands, to liberate all the islands from the Japanese. That's in Burma. This is the Italian medal in which I fought in a place called Milos, M-I-L. O.S. Milos. And there was a gun emplacement at that particular island that was interfering with the shipping lanes and we had to go in and silence these guns. That is the Italian medal. Then this is the Atlantic medal. Uh, we were taking, uh, escorting uh, merchant ships up to Russia to Archangel and uh, Murmansk uh, with uh, tanks and uh, airplanes, armaments, because in those days Russia uh, was nearly beaten by the Germans and thank God the United States came to Russia's aid in giving them all these armaments. So this medal was for escorting the ships to Murmansk. Remembrance Day to me is something that, um, I, I don't know, I, I, I think it doesn't mean that we're only remembering things from the past and old things and that's, I, I, it's happening now and we have sons and brothers and husbands that are fighting for Canada now and they're dying. and. We need to be like remem remembering them also and the sacrifice they uh, they give for our country. They're they're fighting for their country and they're our heroes, just like before. They should always be our heroes. <laughs>